shit. But I know the homies is over there eating right now, and most of them niggas just got the penitentiary with us, and we 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 grew up with all them niggas. I'm talking about the Paw Rules. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about from Mob James on down to Bunch of Real, rest in peace, to Heron, rest in peace, his brother JP, you know what I'm saying, me, uh, Stanley Pitts, Stanley Robinson, you know what I'm saying, me, CJ, Walk Dog, these are bruisers. Yeah, I got a question. Oh, you keep on, on, on going on with your story. But is there a difference between a, a, a blood and a power group? Man, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really glad that you test that question, man, and that I'm able to be able to speak on it for the record, for history. Again, this is the millennium bullshit of these youngsters that took this shit and twisted our shit all up like a tussy roll. First and foremost, homie, when the Pi Rules was established, they was Pi Rules. They never separated they stuff and said, oh, we just Pi Rules, we ain't bloods. That shit didn't come about until the millennium of the wars that took place in the streets between the West Side Pi Rules, my neighborhood, and other cliques. Bloods didn't even fight in the 70s and 80s, homie. We was two fucking together. We had to be. We had no fucking time to be fighting another neighborhood or killing the blood from another neighborhood when we was outnumbered 20 to 1, man from hoods that was smashing on niggas. Nigga, Crips was real Crips out here in these streets, my nigga. They was really cripping in the 70s and 80s. They wasn't playing them niggas, was cripping. And then and they hit your block, it's a hundred Crips, and they coming to take, take over this block and say, this block, 10th Street is now 10th Street Crips. That type of shit. So, in order to be a blood and separate from that, you had to be a real one. So, when the Pi Rules was birthed, the Pi Rules became Pi Rules. They were strength, you feel what I'm saying? It's just they had a cause, the same as the Crips did when the Pyrus was established. They had the same community activist cause as the Crips did. At first, originally, it wasn't even about the gang banging or gangs. This shit was to protect our communities. This was for the harvest and growth of the communities. This was basically the chapter that was left off of the Black Panthers. So this was the pickup. But somehow, we allowed Whitey and the devil to put some shit in the mix and it became genocide and poison to our own communities and amongst ourselves and we became the murderers and the killers so we killed for them so they didn't have to do nothing like always they outthought us and they outsmart they said oh them self bitches want to be gang members huh they want to be community activists huh okay Jagger fat ass sit right back and said we're going to turn those fuckers into gangsters and terrorists and I'm going to show you how we're going to give them guns we're going to give them drugs we're going to give them all the shit they need and in the end they're gonna self-destruct. They're gonna do the job for us. But I want them some bitches now, lady. Talking about fat boy Jack the Hood, man. The motherfucker who started the F with the B and the I, man. You youngsters better wake up out there, history, man. So again, going back to reflecting to the last of your death row question that you asked, this that was my eye opener of death row because I was introduced and then I was asked upon about Suge, and so now by me you know, been asked upon who who is this cat. Now it, it, it became intriguing to me to where okay, I need to find out who he is and meet him personally. Mm -hmm. So now I'm on a mission. So me and my homeboy Bonnie Hunter Rat Dog, rest in peace, you know, we got together and we was already running together in these streets and terrorizing, smashing shit. And so we we known through the prior rule system and you know, they know us. Yeah. And we fucked with the homies heavy. So all the niggas that Suge had on his team. We didn't been to battle with, with these niggas. We didn't got out with these niggas front line and the prison system, the streets. We know them. we grew up with these, these are our homies. Feel me? So we had a relationship with them. So now my my formal introduction was came about one night, you know, uh it was a big party at the Marriott mm -hmm. by the airport. Where you at? And I was I was with Kid and Play, uh Easy Rest in Peace. Before Easy Pass, we had just come back from Frisco from a big major function, so it was having a big. It was a big. Hold on, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, you and Easy was hanging out. Yeah, man. And then what year was this? We talking about 90, 90, 92, right after 91, 1992. First, first March, February, April of ninety two. That's dope. That's dope. Hell yeah. But oh, boy, I, I knew Eric, bro, before he became Eric White. Nigga, I knew he. I knew he from the streets. I knew when he was a little crip from. From over in this area, Captain, the D boy, the whole nine, man. He he was he. You know what I mean? I know he wasn't he wasn't no massive crip like niggas trying to make like he, he was just pushing the line. He was easy E, man. He was a good young nigga from his hood. He took care of his, ter his territory. Yeah. He got his money, he was a hustle, he was a grind, he was E. You know, the movie kinda 
put extras on certain shit because it's the movies, but it is what it is. But Eric Wright was Eric Wright. He was a good nigga. But he didn't bounce up into the motherfucking uh, skate lands and beat up no bloods and all that <laughs> shit, homie. No, yeah. none of that didn't, didn't, didn't go down. Not no pot none of that, homie. Yeah. Feel me? And when there wasn't no nigga slapping up Big Puddin', man, from Big Puddin' Tang, nigga, from West Side Pot Room, nigga. When them niggas slapping Terry Carter up, nigga, and, you know what I mean? Chin and chipping them niggas, man. And Big Wayne, man, niggas was bruisers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was E, you know what I mean? And it's just crazy, man. And save us MC8, you know? It's like niggas be out here, this, this media have niggas all fucked up, man. Yeah. You know, and, they, and you can't convince these dudes. Oh, I'm All right, brother. But you gotta live this shit to really know it, though. Yeah. You got to live it. Concert. Okay. I'm right there, bro. You're not talking about Nakia the Theater, right? Nah, this is just before Nakia was even built. Okay. It's okay. a little bitty theater off, right off of Wilshire. Okay. And, um, we was throwing a party there, you know, Death Row was throwing a party that night. So, Quick was performing and shit, and a couple of niggas was in the audience, and young nigga, you know, again, like I said, niggas gang banged out here. These young niggas was gang banging, and knowing they was in a blood function, this is a blood function. First of all, when Death Row was Death Row, man, I don't care what niggas say, nigga. If you were Death Row, and you were not bad boy, nigga, that was the movement back then. And anything when Death Row was moving, Death Row was smashing, moving, everything moving. Niggas was getting out the way. So, for three young niggas who was really Crips to go into a blood function and they flamed up with their flags and they cripping and throwing up their set, that's gang banging. That's what we do here in Los Angeles. See, niggas don't got them problems. You ain't got them kind of hops nowhere else. Yeah. Niggas was gang banging. So the youngster who got killed, he was a gang banging. He was banging. He banged on them niggas on the stage while he was saying on the stage rap, right? niggas was in the audience banging on him. And the homie said, oh. And that's what took, took, took place. And boy, all hell broke loose. Niggas got beat by a little bit of everything and everybody. It wasn't just no one. Niggas, niggas got, man, this is masquerading, man. Feel me? Yeah. Because niggas gang banged. It was really gang banging. Niggas wasn't playing around. Niggas wasn't just bodyguards. Niggas was gang bangers and gang members on death row. Fresh out the pen. We just did five years. You right. Hope tell you, come on, nigga. You mainly you on payroll. But what I gotta do? Knock out anything moving. Anything Simon say, nigga, we Simon said, that's what it is. Yeah. Oh shit, all right, nigga, on blood. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's how it was, bro. Yeah. And so so my introduction is like I said, I um I had to meet this cat. And my form of meeting him was not meeting him on a level of force. I want to be your boy, one of your bodyguards. Nigga, I need in. I need a piece of the pie. That type of meeting. So that's where um, we would say my, my death row heist days came about, you know, where I took a half a million from the most feared nigga in the game back in that, that time on, in that hold era. On, hold on, you know what I'm I said it. I, that's why I didn't stutter. I said we took a half a million from the most feared nigga in the game in that era at that time, man, when he was at his peak, when he was that nigga. And the world feared him and, and was petrified of them bonnie hunters. We took a half a million, nigga, me and my homeboy, Rap Dog, and the manipulous top dog, man, TDE. Yeah. I started the first company we was established up. RBD. Top got my formula and ran with it. RBD. Rat, BJ, and Dude. I started that production company first. Look it up. Oh, it's all legit. I opened our first bank account at City National Bank, homie. Put a half a million dollars in that motherfucker. Rat, BJ, and Dude, we did that. You know, a uh, bunch of y'all was telling the story, well, I mean, not a bunch, excuse me. Uh, Mob James was telling the story, and I, somebody, one of the homies hit me up, and I looked at the video, and he was telling the story about what took place in the projects and how these niggas cornered them in the bathroom, but when he failed to realize, he had forgot. It wasn't G eyes, it was me. He, he had mentioned Green Eyes name and Rat Dog. It was me and Rat Dog. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, uh, but yeah, nevertheless, that was my introduction. And so, but the night that Suge really actually met me was I called him out for a fight at the Marriott. That's why I told you I was going to eat. You called Suge called out for a fight? I called him out for that fade, homie, straight up. Niggas already know out there. Nigga in the power room land, the homies, everywhere, the facts, nigga. Called him out for that fade. Yeah. We're at the Marriott. We're in the elevator. It's me, Rat Dog, Big Chin from Westside Power Room, Big Chip, Big Wayne, uh, Uncle Mike, Criss Cross. You feel what I'm saying? Me, like I said, we, we just get out the elevator because we just leave easy in them from upstairs, so we going down. Yeah. And so when we going down, we get off the elevator. Soon we get off the elevator, one of the young homies come in screaming. 
And when he come in screaming, he went right to me and rap. And so we immediately, we see the commotion outside. So again, we LA niggas from the street, we think it's a game ball going down. So first thing, we on point. We go to the door to see what's happening. All we see is red. We see niggas squabbling, squared off, it's all red. And we look, it's the east and the west. So immediately he took one side, I took a side, I ran right up. Rick James was fighting with one of the little homies. And I just grabbed Rick James and slung his ass. And Rick was a little stocky, little swole nigga. I ain't stocky. I just slung him. And I looked up, it's Rock Chisholm. And I threw my arm up, it's Rock Chisholm. The homie Rock from the fire on the nigga. I said, Rock, what's happening, blood? Blood, what's, what's, blood, what's happening? It's the homies fighting the homies. I said, blood, what is you niggas doing? We don't get out like this, blood. It's the west side and the east side going at it. So, that was my formal introduction. Then, who's the nigga responsible for this shit, my nigga? Who, who put us against each other? And that's when I called a nigga out. I said, Blood, y'all running behind this fat ass nigga? This the nigga that I die? Blood, give me, somebody give me some motherfucking tennis shoes right quick. I'm gonna fuck this nigga up. Cause I had on some, I had on some loafers. Yeah. Said, somebody give me some tennis shoes so I can fuck this nigga up, Blood. And so now, by this time, he asking the Pyro homies, the homies, who is Blood, who, who is Blood in them? He said, them the homies, BJ Brad, it's cool, homie, it's the homie. So they try to hold it back from us. Like, they try to make sure we don't get to him. Mm. It's, the, it's the homie. So now, all the commotion is simmered to now everything is on me and rap. So now I'm like, blood, fuck this nigga, blood. I'm gonna fuck this nigga up, who is this nigga? And so now that's when they like, this the homie, man, this da da da. I said, I don't give a fuck who that nigga is, Jay. Me and I'm like, and I'm trying to call the homies by name, Heron, a bunch of you know, all the homies out there, these my homies. I grew up with all these niggas. I got at least over 20 years prior knowing these dudes before he even came in the picture mm -hmm. from the streets and the system. So I'm like, what the fuck going on? And then that's when the, uh, they gave me and Willie Dog the phone number said, man, we, we gonna make contact, we gonna holler. They jumped in the limos and got on and shit. But that was my former introduction. And then from there, you know, everything else was history, man.